Family Theater presents Jeff Chandler and Joan Evans. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Man of the House, starring Jeff Chandler with Helen Parrish. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Joan Evans. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, Man of the House, starring Jeff Chandler as Jim, with Helen Parrish as Martha. <laughs> which rushes from the gate that leads to an upstate train, there comes a tall, good-looking man in his early 40s, pushing a wheelchair. In that chair, inert, motionless, sits a man 10 years his companion's junior. There's something in the unnaturalness of his posture which tells us that this man is paralyzed, his body totally inactive. His body, yes, but his mind, oh, his mind. <laughs> Back in New York. New York. As though that made any difference. As though it could matter where they put me. What does Charlie hope to accomplish by this? Does he think could hear in surroundings I know, among people I love? People I love. Here she comes. Martha. Aged terribly. Is it only a year? A year since she sent me to work that day and it all happened. She sees us. She's running now. The boy isn't with her. She's alone. My wife, Martha. Charles? Charles? Martha! Well, we didn't know whether you'd be able to meet us or not. I was not. afraid you weren't coming, that you'd changed your mind, Charles. No, my dear. The other doctors let me have my way. Jim. Jim, darling. I'm afraid it's quite useless, Martha. He's no better? I was hoping that when he saw you after all these months... Jim, you're home now and you're going to stay here. You're never going to leave Tommy and me again. We need you. Can't you hear me, Jim? He never gives any sign. Jim, can't you smile at me at least? Just some little sign? Oh, Charles... It's as though he doesn't hear me. Doesn't know me. I'm sure he does hear you, Martha. Does know you. If we could only make him want to answer, want to smile. Yes, you're sure, Charlie. You've been sure from the start. Since you rushed into the office and treated me that day. After you saw there was nothing you could do for Fred. Nothing anyone could do. You've been sure since then, but it hasn't helped me. It doesn't change the facts, and the facts are that Fred Pierce died. Died because he counted on me, and I failed him. I failed him. Those are the facts. The facts that keep me from smiling, from reaching out to touch Martha's face. That's why I can't tell her not to cry, but it's going to be all right. Once I do that, Charlie, it's all going to begin again, life as it was, and I, I can't face it knowing that I failed. I can't face it, Charlie. Not for you or Martha or anyone. You mustn't ask me to try anymore. You just mustn't ask me. I'm hoping that when he sees Tommy... Tommy's been so anxious ever since I told him his dad was coming home. Well, we'd better get him out of this station and into a cab. Yes. Jim, dear... We're going home. We're going home. Yeah. 
careful now. There we are. We're home, Jim. After all those lonely months, we're home again, together. Not a sign that he recognizes it, that this place means anything to him. We painted the living room, Jim, Tommy and me. We wanted it to be just right when you got here. I remember this was your favorite color. Huh? It's useless, Martha. Where's Tommy? I left him at the Ryan's next door. Better go get him. I'll wait here with Jim. Yes, I, I know he must be wondering what's happened. I won't be a minute, Charles. Home. This is my home. Just as it was before... before the accident. Comfortable room. Furniture's not new, just at the well-worn stage when a man's not afraid to relax in it. A man. A stone, silent, motionless. An empty shell to be thrown away. She's gone to get Tommy. What'll he be like? Boys of ten change fast. A year makes all the difference. My son. I wonder how he feels about me. Charlie's staring at me as if he could read my thoughts. My doctor, the man who knows me best. If he did know my thoughts, would he understand? You can hear me, can't you, Jim? I know you can. Jim, when Martha and the boy come back, you've got to show them that you recognize them, that you haven't given up. They're counting on you. You're a well man, Jim. This fear is in your mind, that's all. There's nothing the matter with your body. Hasn't been for months. You're just afraid to come back to living. That's it, isn't it? You're refusing to face life again. It's easier to sit in that chair, to sit and let life move around you, to watch and listen. Well, you can't give up like this. It isn't just you. Martha and Tommy need you. You're young, Jim. Fight this thing in your mind for them. Fight it. When she comes through that door with the boy, Jim, I'm counting on you. Do you hear me, Jim? Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Yes, I hear you, Charlie. But you don't know. You don't understand. If I did what you asked, it'd mean going back, facing Mr. Sloan, admitting I failed. The others in the office all watching. I can't go back, Charlie. I can't. It's not fair to ask me to. I'm safe here in my chair. I'm safe. She's back. They're coming. They're counting on you, Jim. Jim, here's Tommy. Uh, hi, Dad. I, I've been watching for you. Tommy's been making such plans, Jim. Honestly, to hear him There's talk... a swell club in the neighborhood now, Dad. The guys and their dads do things together. Mr. Ryan and all the men... The next on. big thing they plan is a three-day hike. I thought maybe if you were feeling better, of Dad... Of course it... you'll be feeling better. Won't you, Jim? Won't you? It'll be just the guys and their dads. I've been telling them you were coming home. They all want to meet you. Jim. Jim, it's Tommy. Our Tommy. Don't you know him? Don't you know me, Dad? Wait. Wait, he's trying. Look at his eyes. Jim. Jim, just a sign. A smile. Anything, Dad. Just anything. I... I'd like to, Tommy. Club sounds great. Nice-looking kid, Tommy Roberts. Growing fast. Soon be a young man. Man of the house, while I sit and watch you come and go. All I've got left, watching. Oh, but I wish I could tell you I'm not a coward. That day when, when that killer came into Sloan's, I was scared, but, but I rushed him anyway. I tried to knock the gun down. They've got to tell you that. I tried. But he shot Fred anyway, and when Fred fell, he... He looked at me. Looked at me as if it were my fault. I'd failed him. But I, I wasn't a coward then. Now I am. Now I'm afraid to go back. 
I might fail someone else who needed me. You, Tommy, I might fail you. I won't do it. I won't try again. They can't make me try. I can stay in this chair for the rest of my life. The rest of my life. But I'm sure that I'm right in this, Mr. Sloan. Really, Dr. Dresser, why should Roberts have a guilt complex? Everyone knows he wasn't responsible for the holdup. Surely I've made that clear. He did his best. But Jim's best wasn't good enough. And his best friend died. Roberts tried to knock the gun from the bandit's hand. Besides, Doctor, the holdup man was caught. He's paid the penalty. Why should Roberts take it so personally? Oh, it's irrational, Mr. Sloan. I know it. But it's fixed in Jim's mind that he failed, that Fred Pierce died because of his inadequacy. But that's preposterous. Yes, to us, because our perspective is right. But Jim has lain in that sanitarium and convinced himself that he's to blame. And as a result, now he's afraid to come back to normal living again. He's afraid he might have to face another emergency. And that he'd fail again. And there's nothing physical in this paralysis? Not a thing. If Jim wanted to walk again, he could. What do you expect me to do? Well, his wife and I thought perhaps if you'd come and see him, you could reassure him of your confidence in him. Mm -hmm. Tell him you need him here, that, that you're looking forward to having him back. Well, of course, if you think it will help, Dr. Dresser. Uh, I don't think it will, Mr. Sloan. It's just a chance. But now we're grasping at every straw. I understand. Name the hour and day. I'll be there. Can you see the clock, Tommy? What time is it? Uh, almost seven, Mom. Your Uncle Charles and Mr. Sloan will be here soon. I want to get this dinner table cleared at least. Well, can I help? No, you sit there with your dad. Is he comfortable? Well, seems to be. No, one pillow slipped down a little bit. There. Keep him company while I rinse these dishes in the kitchen. Call me if Charles and Mr. Sloan come. I wish we could talk, Dad. I don't even know whether you hear me or not. Looking in your eyes, it seems like you know what I'm saying. But oh, I can't be sure. The club's getting ready for that big hike I told you about. Don't guess I'll be going. Mm. Just as well. Mom don't like to be left alone without a man in the house. You know how women are, Dad. Kind of nervy. Man of the house. My son, Tommy. The man of the house. Because I let him down. Sorry about that hike, boy. But I suppose you're used to disappointments now. You'll have others. Sloan's coming here tonight. Sloan's supposed to tell me everything's all right. Oh, it's not. I know it's not. Fred counted on me, trusted me. Fred died. No one understands that. They want to force me back into living, into being counted on. Don't count on me, Tommy. Don't depend on me, on anyone but yourself. They'll fail you. Fail you. Dad! Dad, what's the matter? Dad! Tommy, what happened? It was Dad. For a minute, I thought he was trying to tell me something. I know, son. Sitting here beside him, sometimes I can almost hear his thoughts, it seems. But it's only that we both want it so much. Yeah, Mama. I guess that's it. Oh, that's your Uncle Charlie and Mr. Sloan. Coming. Dad. Oh, Dad, why don't you show him? Why don't you? Good evening, Charles. Come in, Mr. Sloan. It was nice of you to come. Glad to be of help, Mrs. Roberts. How's Jim? About the same, Mr. Sloan. We don't notice much change. Uh, hello, Jim. Here's Mr. Sloan to see you. It's good to see you again, Jim. Hello, oh, Mr. Sloan. Well, hello there, youngster. A uh, fine-looking boy you've got there, Jim. He... He's always like this? No sign? Always. Jim, we're anxious to have you back at the office. We need you, Jim. Everyone misses you. How soon can we expect you back? When can we count on seeing you back at the old days? <laughs> Everyone misses me. Fred, too, Mr. Sloan. Everyone misses Fred. He won't be back. He 
can't go back, and you know why he can't. You and the others. You think I could sit in that office knowing what all of you were thinking? Knowing you were blaming me? I couldn't stand it. I couldn't. I won't. No one blames you, Jim. The man who killed Fred was convicted, condemned. Can't you hear me, Jim? He's closing his eyes. It's no use, Mr. Sloan. I want to thank you for your trouble. Oh, it was no trouble. I only wish it worked. Surely there's something to pull him out of this? Well, there's one other experiment I want to make. And when that fails, what's Mrs. Roberts to do? She can't go on taking care of him. Of course she can't. He's got to go back to the sanitarium. Oh, no, I won't listen now, to Now, be reasonable, Martha. Your insurance won't last forever. You'll be going to work. And then who'll take care of him? Seems to me Dr. Dresser is right, Mrs. Roberts. If Jim is completely helpless, he'd be better off in a sanitarium. You'll have enough to do with the boy. Sanitarium. Back to the sanitarium. Yes, that'd be best. I'm no help here. It was restful there. No one to bother, no one to worry with you. Just quiet. Peace. Nothing expected of you, nothing demanded. Yes, let them send me to the sanitarium again. It's better for all of us. Well, Sloan's leaving. They're following him to the door. He's going ahead. Charlie's waiting. He's saying something to Martha. What's he saying? Oh, another What's failure, Martha. I hadn't counted on it. Neither had I, but it seemed too good a chance to miss. You meant that just now, about sending him back? What else is there to do? You can't work and care for him, too. I thought when I brought him back here with the people he loved, who loved him, that he'd see that he must come back. But you were wrong. So it seems. How can we ever thank you, Charles, for... For doing nothing? Well, you're tired, Martha. I won't keep you. I think I'll see if I can catch up with Mr. Slow. We'll see you soon. You better lock this door after me. Well, the lock's broken. I've been meaning to fix it. Well, that means anyone could walk in. I don't like it. You better let me fix it for you, Martha. Not tonight. We'll be all right. I can look after Mom, Uncle Charlie. Oh. <laughs> I'd forgotten you'd be here, youngster. Well, be careful, and I'll fix this lock the next time I'm over. Good night, Charles. And thanks again. Good night, Uncle Charlie. Good night. Come on, son. It's time to put Dad to bed. Yeah, sure, Mom. He looks so tired. He needs rest. Easy now, Tommy. Not too fast. Easy. Yes, Martha. I am tired. I do need rest. To lie here in this quiet room. To know that for eight hours at least, there'll be no one to ask questions. To look accusingly. To expect things of me. Tommy and Martha are mumbling, He's saying his prayers. Now she's kissing him goodnight. And the light's out. She's coming in here very quietly, not wanting to disturb me. Oh, poor Martha. Now she stoops over me and kisses me on the forehead. Her cheek is wet. She's been crying. Oh, Martha. You need me, and I need you, but now it's too far to go now. The walls I've built are high and firm. I, I can't come back. I can't. Now you mustn't expect it of me. Now she's in bed. All the lights are out. The apartment is quiet. If it could just be this way always, this blessed quiet, with only the sound of Martha's breathing. What was that? It sounded like the outside door, that, that lock. Martha said it was broken. Charlie was worried. That, that was a door closing. I'm sure of it. Someone closed the outer door. Tommy? No, no, it couldn't be Tommy. Martha's here beside me. Someone's come into the house. 
There's someone groping through the living room, coming toward our room here. What am I going to do? I, I, I can't move. I can't even call out. He stopped at the door to the bedroom. He's listening. Yes, I, I can make out his shadow now, leaning there. His head bent forward, straining to hear. Martha's breathing is even, regular. She doesn't suspect. There's nothing for him to steal. If, if no one moves, he'll see there's nothing and then go away. No one will be hurt. He's got a flashlight looking at things on the dresser. One of those, those pen flashlights, just a little splash of light and a, a white gloved hand. Oh, hurry, hurry, please. If Martha wakes up, she might call out and he'd have to... <laughs> drop something. Martha must have heard that. The flashlight's off. Where is he? What's he doing? He's going through the dresser drawers. Must be looking for Martha's purse. Well, why doesn't he hurry? If she wakes up, cries out, he... He might shoot her. It'd be like Fred. Like the other time. Martha's awake now. I, I, I know she is. I can feel she, she's lying in the darkness, waiting, waiting for what? It's no use, Charles. I knew it wouldn't work. Turn on the light. Charlie. Then it was just a trick, a cheap trick to make me try to help, to frighten me. Didn't you hear me, Charles? Turn on the light. It's just inside the door. Charles. It is you there, isn't it, Charles? Charles! But it isn't, Charlie. There's someone in this room with us. Someone crouched over there by the dresser. Watching, breathing heavily, but... It's not Charlie. There's no trick. It's not Charlie at all. It isn't, Charles. What are we going to do? There's someone in here. Jim! Jim! He's got a gun. That was the click of a safety. Just the way it was the other time. Martha's depending on me now, just as Fred depended before. But I, I, I'm helpless. There's nothing I can do. No one could expect it. Jim! Jim, you've got to help us. Jim! Mom? What is it, Mom? Tommy, stay there! Stay there! Mom, there's something wrong. Get back, Tommy! He's going to... Tommy! Jim, be careful! He shot at Tommy! He shot at Tommy! Jim, he'll shoot you too, Jim! I, I'm weak, but I, I'm going to stop him! Jim! Jim! Give, give me that gun. Give it to me. Mom, Mom, what is it? Stay there, son. Someone broke in. Your father's trying to get I, a gun away from him. Be careful, Dad. Be careful. No. No, you don't. Give it. Give it to me. No. Drop it. Drop it. Ah! Jim! Dad. Dad. So, turn on. Turn on the lights. Oh, darling. Darling. Martha, dearest. Oh, Dad, the, the man, is he? No, 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 he's... He's just knocked out. Shots went wild here. Yeah, help me, help me to the edge of the bed. Oh, Jim, are you all right? I... I'm fine. I've never been better. Martha? Martha, those shots, what's happened? What was it? Did... Jim! Hello, Charlie. Martha, he's... He's all right? I, I'm fine, Doctor. Well, yes, but, but this man on the floor, the, those shots I heard. Jim, can you ever forgive us? Charlie and I planned for him to pretend to be a prowler. So when this man broke in, I... You thought I'd come back. Uh -huh. Until he shot at Tommy, I, I... I didn't think I could do it, but... That shot, it, it seemed to break a cord that had been holding me back. Jim, no more doubts? No more. Gee, we ought to call the police. Us robbers probably wanted. There may even be a reward for him, Dad. That's right, Tommy. I'd better get busy. Anything special you'd like me to tell him, Jim? Special? No, no, I... I don't think so. Just say that a prowler broke into the Roberts apartment, 3A, and was captured single-handed by the man of the house. This is 
Joan Evans again. I think all of us have heard the expression, it is better to give than to receive. It means being kind, giving of ourselves and our services to others, performing those little acts of thoughtfulness and consideration that will make life more pleasant for those about us. You know, the unique thing about kindness is that it's something very contagious. A kind word or act on our part will, will not only bring happiness and encouragement to others, it'll do more. It will inspire others to be kind. In a home, in a family, kindness helps so much. Being constantly thoughtful and considerate of the feelings and needs of, 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 of one another makes a home the happy and contented place it should be, a place where all are working together in peace and harmony. To be truly kind, we must forget ourselves, have our thoughts on someone else, someone who is the source of kindness, God. And our thoughts are lifted to God by prayer, family prayer. So to bring kindness into your home with all the blessings that flow from it, pray together as a family. Pray together tonight. Remember, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Man of the House, starring Jeff Chandler. Joan Evans was your hostess. Helen Parrish was featured as Martha. Others in our cast were Vic Perrin, Michael Hayes, and Jeff Silver. The script was written by John McGreevy, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when family theater will present special delivery shows starring Joan Evans, Jack Bailey, and Scotty Beckett. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.